Good morning and welcome. A few notes before we begin today's Mass. All must keep their mask on throughout the entire Mass. Singing is discouraged, but humming is encouraged. Please come up in a single line for communion six feet apart. Take communion in your hand, step aside, pull down your mask, consume the host, and then replace your mask and return to your seat. The parish offering basket is located at the handicap door, and the restrooms are closed. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace of God our Father, and His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. In our second reading today, Paul reminds us that nothing can ever separate us from the love of Christ. No matter what we do, no matter how bad we might be, his love for us is still there. But we don't always return that love. And the only way we can return love to Christ is by loving one another. Because Christ is present in all of our sisters and brothers. For the times that we have not loved, for the times that we have not recognized that presence of Jesus, we now call to mind our sins and ask forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you feed the hungry and care for the poor. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your healing touch brings wholeness and life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are just in all your ways, holy in all your works. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Loving God, 
as a mother tenderly gathers her children, and as a father joyfully welcomes his own, so in the compassion of Jesus, you nurture and nourish us, feed us and heal us. Let the bread Jesus multiplied them in the wilderness be broken and shared among us now. May the communion we experience with each other in this holy meal compel us to seek communion with everyone in loving service for all. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread? your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew you with the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this, and they followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place. It's already late. Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the ground. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves and gave it to the disciples, who in turn gave it to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they placed the fragments left over, 12 with wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Once there was a young seminarian, he was ordained deacon and he comes back to his home parish to help out there for the summer. And the first Sunday that he's there, the pastor said to him, I want you to give the sermon today. Well, the young man gets up in the pulpit and he says, Jesus took 5,000 fish, 2,000 loaves of bread, and he fed five people. Can you do that? And everybody started laughing. And he couldn't understand why they were laughing. And after Mass, the pastor said to him, you got it all backwards. He says, practice again all week, and next Sunday you're going to give the sermon again. So the following week, the young man gets up, and he starts out, 
Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fish, and he fed 5,000 people. Can any one of you do that? And there was one man in the congregation put his hand up. And the young deacon looked at the man and says, Sir, are you saying that you could do that? How could you do that? He said, with the food that was left over from last week's sermon. <laughs> Jesus fed 5,000 people, not counting women and children. So there could have been 10, 15, maybe 25,000 people there. It's amazing, isn't it? It's the only miracle of Jesus that's recounted in all four Gospels. All the other miracles, one Gospel or another, maybe two will talk about them. But this one, all four Gospels tell the story of the multiplication of loaves and fishes. Why? The early church must have thought that this Gospel this action of Jesus was probably the most important action in his life as far as miracles go. Oh. Go back and look at the scene. Jesus had heard that his cousin John the Baptist had been killed, had been beheaded by Herod. And Jesus just wanted to get away for himself by himself to be able to wrestle and deal with his grief, his own personal loss. And yet, when the people saw where he was going and he went four miles across the lake on a boat, they hurried and got there ahead of him. Because you see, Jesus in his day in that area was like a rock star today. And everybody wanted to come out and everybody wanted to hear him and everybody wanted to see him. And in spite of his own personal sense of loss and sorrow, when he looked at the people that were there, we're told he took compassion on them. Compassion on them. That's a much better translation than the word pity that they use now. The older translation was always compassion. And when you see compassion, it means to do something to change a person's situation. And that's what he did. We're told he healed their sick. He taught them to heal their spirits. And he was there for the whole day. And it's late. And the disciples say, let's get rid of these people. We've got to get rid of them. They, they're, they're hungry. Let them go. Let them go in town. Go to McDonald's. Go to Burger King. Get the fast food. Have something to eat. Get them out of here. And Jesus says to the disciples, no, no, you feed them. If you're one of my disciples, you have to know that you have to go out and feed other people. And they said, how? How are we going to do it? We have five loaves of bread. We have two fish. Look at all these people. In one of the other recounting of the story, it's one of the disciples Andrew, who brings a young boy that has the five loaves of bread and the two fish. People in the crowd had food with them. Not everybody, and people were hungry. But what did Jesus do? He said, give them something to eat. Mm. One of my favorite stories is a story called Stone Soup. And there was a village which had had a famine where people were very, very poor. And everybody sort of kept to themselves and they held on to what little bit they had to eat. And one day, a stranger came into town and he knocked at the door of a house and the woman opens it on the crack and says, what do you want? And the stranger says, I'm hungry, and I need a place to stay. And the woman says, well, we have no food. We're too poor, and she slams the door in his face. So the stranger, the man, looks around, 
and picks up a stone from the ground. And he knocks on the door again. And he knocks and he knocks until she finally opens it. And she says, what do you want? I told you we have nothing. We can't give you anything. And the stranger said to her, but I have a magic stone, and this stone will make soup. The woman says, are you crazy? And the man says, no. Let me in, and I'll show you how we can make soup from the stone. So she's curious, and she lets him in. And he says to her, now get a big pot of water boiling. She does. When the water is boiling, he takes the stone and drops it in the boiling water. And he lets it boil for a few minutes. Then he takes a spoon and tastes it. And he says, oh, this is getting very good. It's very good, but it needs a little salt and pepper. So the woman goes and gets the salt and pepper and puts it in, boils it a little bit more, tastes it. Oh, he says, this is absolutely delicious. It's going to be the best stone soup ever. He says, mm, you know, though, if we had a cabbage, it would even make it better. And the woman thinks, and she says to her little daughter, oh, go down the road to Mrs. Jones, and she's got a garden, and she's been raising cabbages. Maybe she'll give him one, give us one, that we can use, and invite her to come and have the soup with us. So the girl goes and comes back with the cabbage and with the woman from that house, and now the stranger takes and puts the cabbage in the stone soup, and he's staring it and cooking it, and the smell is coming out the windows. It's smelling so good. And some other neighbors came and said, what's going on here? And the woman said, oh, he's making stone soup for us. And he tastes it, and he says, oh, this is wonderful. He says, if we had a few more vegetables, it might be better. So one woman ran home and gets a couple of carrots, and another one comes back with a potato, and they put all of that in it. And he's stirring it and stirring it, and as he's doing it, more people are coming. And somebody there said, oh, you know, I had killed a, a pig recently. And I have some of the fat, some of the meat left. Uh, let me bring it. It might make your soup better. And finally, after all of the ingredients were there, he had the pot of stone soup. And everybody in that little village sat down and ate. You see, none of them had enough on their own to make it. But when everybody bought what little they had, there was more than enough. That's the miracle here. Jesus took the bread, the fish, blessed it. He broke that bread, and he gave it to them, to his disciples, who in turn gave it to the crowds. And in seeing that action, I really believe that the crowds, those who had something with them, was willing to share it with one another probably the biggest picnic. If they had Guinness Book of World Records back then, that would have probably made the top list of the biggest picnic in the world. But it was the sharing. And that's what brought healing to their bodies, as well as his word brings healing to their souls. We make stone soup every time we come around the altar. Because we take bread, we take wine, and we make it the best food that we could ever have. That bread of life, that cup of salvation, the living body and blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. We're fed physically with his body and blood, but we're fed spiritually with his word in, in the scriptures in the Gospels, in the Epistles. That's how we're fed spiritually. We have the teaching of Jesus, the same as the people 5,000 years ago heard him speak. We hear him speak today, and then we feed on him. But we have to go out. 
and we have to feed others. And the only way that you and I can feed others is first by living the life that Jesus has taught us to live, by living lives of compassion, lives of sincerity, lives of love toward everyone we meet. And if we live that life of compassion, it means we have to do something to change things in our world. And we do that by reaching out and feeding our sisters and brothers. We can all do something. You know, we might not be able to support, say, a home for battered women. But if everybody would give a few pennies, the home would have more than enough. You might not be able to feed another whole family besides your own. But if everybody gave a loaf of bread and a, some canned goods, so many families could be fed. It's only the little things that we do. If we do it as a community, we will make a difference. And that's what Jesus is saying. Share what you have. Be good to one another. And as Paul reminded us, there is nothing that you or I could ever do that would separate us from his love. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us offer our prayer in the name of Jesus, who had compassion on the multitude, and whose bounty feeds us all. May the disciples of Jesus distribute the bread of life to all who hunger, sharing generously with others all that the Lord so graciously shares with us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. May prosperous nations work for a just distribution of resources, inviting all to come and share what God has freely given. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. May those who have turned away from their faith know the compassionate love of God and hear his voice calling them by name. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May we come faithfully to the table of Christ's word and bread, feasting with delight on the food Christ provides. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May Watson Stillwagon and all our faithfully departed now rejoice to belong to God in Christ for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May God grant these needs which you hold in our hearts. For these needs, and for Fritz Rogers, Mary Ann Cullen, Thomas James McMahon, Catherine K. Daly, Paul Hein, Michael Rainsford, William Overholzer, James Green, Patricia Stey, Matthew Peters, Michael Grega, Joan Sensal, and all the people of the parish, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. God of abundance, in you we find nourishment that satisfies. Hear our prayers that your mercy and love might fill the earth so that all people would dwell in peace. And we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the offering of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children, for the poor, for the sick, for the sinner. He became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father, and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the choirs of angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as we join in their unending hymn of praise. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when is once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask you to send forth the power of your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine. Let them become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke the bread 
He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that through the power of your spirit of love, we may be included now and until the day of eternity, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And let your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, so that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, and with all the saints, may we praise you and give you glory through Jesus Christ, your Son. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your people, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Thank you. Now let us share that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
to those who are at home and unable to receive Eucharist today physically, I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion, asking the Lord Jesus to come into your heart, come into your life, and fill you with the knowledge of how much he loves you. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water flowing from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. Protect me from the evil one. And at the hour of my death, call me to come close to you, that with all your saints, I may praise you forever. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, bring them to eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he fill you with healing in mind, body, and spirit. May he grant you peace. May he give you every blessing now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord and one another. Have a great week.